Hi everyone, this is the first in a series of videos designed to show you how to do lifecycle designer validation. I'm going to drop a couple fields onto our form. And we're going to perform validation on these two fields. So if we click on one of the fields we want to perform validation on, if we go to the object palette and then the value tab, there's a number of validations we can perform. First drop down controls the very basic validation. The first three are the ones you'll use the most. User entered optional means that a value can be provided by the user or they can choose to omit a value. Uh, this is essentially no validation. User entered recommended will display a warning if the user does not provide a value but they can choose to override that warning message. User entered required means that a value absolutely must be provided and they will not be allowed to submit a form without providing the value. One other option is user can override. Uh, if this is for a calculated field, you can create an override message. This is if you provide a calculated field but want to allow the user to change that calculated field. Uh, this will allow you to display a message when they choose to override that value. So let's go ahead and do a demonstration for user entered recommended. We'll note that it gives us this message here and it allows us to ignore and submit. Now if we change that to user entered required, if we leave that field blank and hit XML submit, it will not let us go further until we provide a value. Once we provide a value, we can then submit. There's a number of other validations you can do. One is the empty message validator or I should just say empty field validation. You can provide a message for when the field becomes empty. I'll show you how that works. So let's say they provide a value and then they remove the value this message will appear. Another case is we provide a default value and they remove it. This message will appear. It however will not appear in the case where they never attempt to put in a value Instead, you will get the required message or the recommended message as determined by this type dropdown. The next type of validation you can do is a pattern validation. This is useful for numeric and date fields. So let's require the user to enter a date like this. And let's say I'm not aware of that date format mask and I try to enter a date. It tells us that the date field is invalid and we can choose to ignore that and submit anyway. However, we can choose to make this pattern a error and when it's an error it's like the required type and it will not allow them to submit the form until it is corrected. You can also override the message because it's helpful to know what I did wrong.
Oh, hey, I know what I did wrong. No problem, I'll just go back and correct that. Now I can hit submit. The last type of validation is the validation script message, and we'll cover that in the next video.